Hollywood Beach Broadwalk, asking people today about change and what kind of change has come into your life in recent years. I guess the most uh, profound one is the birth of my son Skyler, who is sitting off to your right. He has taught me that there is more to life than my own narcissistic pleasures. To find out that there is a little being that is more important to you than uh, anything else in life, and you try to structure your existence to. Uh, Make sure you provide for him and his well-being. My whole life has changed. I'm uh, I'm 58 years old, and you wear it well. Uh, oh, thank you, sir. I find that you need to continually reinvent yourself, not get bored with life. We we get stuck in who we are, and maybe not what we're here to be, and we get stuck looking at uh, a situation and possibly a future with a doom and a gloom instead of looking at what we have now and taking it to a different level. So my change was taking my life to a different level. How do you cope with the change uh, in your life? Well, I'm in a new uh, city right now. It's a bit of a change, but uh, change is quite a constant for me because I work on a boat. So, uh, okay. Um, is this, when you say a new city, meaning is this a new home base? No, no, or just another port? Seven weeks, another port. So. Okay. So, is, you know, you hear the saying, there's a, a woman in every port. Is that true? Oh. <laughs> of course. Every, yeah. Okay. Of course it's true. Every other port, right? Yeah. And the port in every woman. Yeah. Instead of making my goals longer, make them more reachable. Okay. And so breaking it down more step by step. Correct. That's what this year brings for me. And how did you stumble into that, that idea of breaking it down into smaller With steps? great motivation from my partner. Okay. Yes. See the brains of the operation? She gave me the oomph to, to, to start making real decisions and start making you know choices and stepping on it instead of waiting. Sometimes to appease the people in your life, you make changes and try to become what they think you should be, but it never takes. Change is something that comes from, it's an internal mechanism. It comes from within. And if you're not changed, if you're changing for the sake of changing, it will not work. If you change because you truly desire to change, then it should stick. Times in life where change was calling, but you, you weren't ready for the call. Uh, yeah, yeah, you yeah, have been. Sometimes you can get in a rut, can't you? But is the rut something that you were creating? Like, the, the opportunity was there, but you chose not to take the opportunity. Yeah, I could have been, uh, I could have been in this town uh, quite a few years before now, on a different kind of ship. Has embracing change always come natural to you? No, I'm a Taurus. <laughs> I am a bull. So you're stubborn to begin oh with. Oh my God, worms, feet planted in the earth, and I refuse to change. So that is something that I work on continuously is change. What was I'm the, embracing it. What was the watershed moment? When did that, that start tipping and you start beginning to understand how it's important to embrace change? It's been a very slow process. I can say in earnest that after the birth of my son that I'm more likely to embrace change because I realize that I don't have all the answers. And since I'm acting as a role model for my son, it's, in, it's important that I seek out the answers so that I can be a better role model. For me, talking about change, I've had change in my life just recently, unasked for change, and uh, now I think I've got an ulcer, so how's that for your... So careful what you ask for, <laughs> you might get it. <laughs> well, you know, it's how you deal with change, isn't it? Were there ever times in your life where you made changes, but you made them too fast, where maybe you were better off just staying where you were? Yes, but now I believe, now I'm more careful and the changes and the steps I've taken are precautious but with experience. What parts of you have stayed the same? I'm still uh, somewhat of a man-child. I like, I like having a lot of fun. I, I get into traveling and sports and different things that are 
here now, gone later. I mean, live for the moment, so to speak. What is um, life at sea like? Oh, it's great. Simple. Simple life. You eat, you sleep, you go to work. Okay. And you read your book and watch movies. <laughs> what parts of you still remain the same? Oh, my goodness. Who I am. Those, those horns and those feet. I, I still resist change, but it's getting easier and easier. I see. Um, have there been times where you changed too fast, too much too fast, where maybe you should have stayed still and stayed more of the same? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I mean, you get to this where I'm going to change, and you just open yourself to all that the universe has to offer. And all, the universe will offer it to you. What things have you observed in, in other people that's holding them back? Scare. Scared yeah. of changes. They're living in their comfort zone. Okay. Um, everything they're so used to living. You know, not a lot of people willing to let go of what they have, being comfortable and with the family, the job, stable, and right. for something bigger. They don't see the bigger picture. Okay. Did the change start um, before your son's birth when you knew he was on the way? No, it was gradual. I mean, as I was in my 30s, I was starting to. Uh, makes semi-radical changes in my views on life, became more politically aware, more socially aware, more aware of the suffering of others. I thought that that was a sign of, of growth when I wasn't so focused upon my own being. Do you consider yourself a late bloomer? Pretty much like most people who go through college and then graduate school, we tend to be uh, stuck in our own adolescence because we lack responsibility of being, you know, once you're, while you're a student, and once you become engrossed in the real world, you have to uh, grow up. Was being an academician a, a form of shelter, a refuge? Directly, no. Probably indirectly, yes. Uh, what did you study, may I ask? Law. And now you're maybe a comedian? I know so many people dropped out of law and became comedians. <laughs> I dropped out of law to be a ski instructor, and that was my, my midlife <laughs> crisis about 10 years ago. Now I'm stuck. <laughs> You'll know when you are ready to change, and sometimes you have to, and I know it's, you know, we've all heard it, you really need to drop to your knees and hit bottom, and then you can look up. But that's not for everybody. There will come an epiphany for all people that are open to it, the universe will answer it. Was there um, an epiphany in your life that helped you to recognize that it should be more priority? A crossroads, a turning point. I have had so many epiphanies, and it is all gone from like generation to generation. I'm, I think I've had epiphany in 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s, and I'll continue with these epiphanies. It's change. I believe change is an epiphany. As long as you have a goal, you know what you want, it's always in your mind subconsciously. When you see it, you're ready. You know, it took me two years to take the opportunity to finally, finally say, you know what, I'm going to look around. And then all that happens in four months, from interviewing, applying for job, and moving to Miami, living in Miami. So it wasn't overnight. There was to be ready for change took years of preparation or transition? When you're so unhappy and you wanted something just changed differently, and you want to start something new, and you want to do something about it, and not just sitting around and wait for something happen to you, and you go after it, and you have a goal, what you want to look for to be happy. Correct, I mean, you one can only plan for so much until it's actually your time to step. I mean, you, I, I planned and planned and planned, and then now is when I started to react, and I think I'm ready. I, I make the decisions I've made, you know, without thinking because I've been planning for so long that, you know, it just it's my time now. And it's what parts do you like about routine, and what parts do you try to break from routine? Well, well routine is good for operating a, like a, a closed system, like a ship. You, know, you need to have routine to things to run smoothly and to, to identify when things aren't going the way they should be. So step out. What about life? Life is an open system, um, yeah. so there's a part that you need routine. There's a part that yeah, I rely don't. on uh, serendipity. Okay, that's my uh, that's what I go. 
any other thoughts in general on the, the subject of that in life which stays the same versus that what might change? I think in life you just simplify. You realize the most important thing is health. You have health, you have everything. And it's only the people who do not have health that realize how important it is. So just, like my father once said, keep it simple, stupid. You just have to relax and enjoy and love life and know that whatever it is that you want in life, you can have it, but you've got to be willing to receive it. Just saying that you want it isn't enough. So you, you really, I believe, have to accept the now. I am open, I am ready to receive, and I'm ready now. But you've got to mean it. So it's really, change comes only from a true acceptance from the heart. Acceptance from the heart, a feeling, a feeling. And you'll know it when it's there. You're gonna have ups and downs, you know. You gotta be patient to wait for opportunity, but keep in mind that this is your goal, what you go after. And you're gonna have time that when the opportunity is not there yet, but you know it, when it's happened, you don't miss it. You're gonna make sure that you are available and always look for what is out there. So the timing of it is just as important as the action yes. of change itself. Yes. Yeah, and I, I also believe that, you know, one should keep planning, you know, and, and always keep that motivational feeling inside you. As long as you keep the motivation, you keep planning, when the time comes, you'll know when you're ready and you just jump forward with the same motivation you've always had for it. What advice would you give them to help them better uh, cope with the change in their lives? Look internally first to see if you are truly happy and what makes you happy. And if you're not, start to look around you, the people you respect and trust to see what makes them happy. And maybe that will give you uh, some solace. Well, Tim, I thank you so much for your, your time and sharing some of your thoughts today. You're welcome, Eric. And I wish you the best of luck at sea. Well, Chris and Karen, I thank you so much for your time and thoughts today and thank hope you. all the change that you're embarking on lead you to opportunities you. beyond your imagination. Thank you. Rick, I thank you so much for your time today and wish you the best of luck uh, with Skylar and the new year. Good to meet you, brother. Deborah, I thank you so much for your time today and your thoughts and wish you the very best in the new year. My pleasure and happy new year to all and the most beautiful and prosperous. Open your heart and cheers. Thank <laughs> you.